Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to an Our Town Community Show. Today, super excited to have one of my good friends, Craig Camuso, on the show. It's been too long. Good. We we can't we haven't been able to get together in person, so we're doing it at the, the, the TV show. So for those of us who don't know Craig, just tell our audience a little bit about your background. Sure. Well, it's an honor to be on, and Thank Brian, you. it is. It's great to be with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank so, you. So uh, my name's Craig Camuso. I grew up in Snellville. Uh, back when 124 and 78 <laughs> were two-lane roads. We're not dating ourselves. Right? I know, just a tad, just a tad. <laughs> right. But a uh, uh, Snellville native, South Gwinnett grad, went to uh, went to Georgia College and uh, tried baseball. Found out I was going to make no money playing baseball, so <laughs> went ahead and transferred to the University of Georgia, um, where I graduated in 1990, and uh, have uh, I'm now married. Uh, be 28 years a little bit later this month. Congrats to you and years. Kim. Uh, thank you. I have a son who is a sophomore at Georgia College and a daughter who will graduate from UGA in December. Wow. Very happy. Yeah, we, we had a lot of those days. And, you know, basically, you know, the, it was funny at a time when we really got to know each other at Cannon United Methodist Church. We both served as lay leader. Not lay, uh, Yeah, lay leader. I'm trying to remember. The, right. Sorry, the, the age gets to me. But um, so faith and then family and friends, those are from knowing you. Those are important things to you. Right? Extremely. Yeah, extremely. I mean, you can't. Uh, you can't get anywhere without those three, to be honest with you. And at the yeah. end of the day, I mean, that's what you have, yeah. right? And it was, I mean, having, um, you know, meeting you and, and Laura at, at Cannon, um, we kind of watched our, our children grow up and it changed the way you look at, at everything. And you still follow those people. You do. It, it feels like uh, yesterday, you were talking about your son and my daughter, both in college, uh, we announced, we both announced we were having a kid. Remember that? That's right. We and announced that was and then y'all went ahead. 20 years, almost 20 years. 20 years. Wow. And I remember because his birthday. Birthday, I guess it was in September, maybe September, she's October, sure. early October, and I'm sitting there going, I don't know about you, if you're watching, so you can see real stuff happening here. But um, that seems like yesterday. It really does. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and, it, you know what? I remember that day now like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting there, but I remember that. And Laura goes, nudge me, and she goes, Well, I guess we should say it too. That's right. And <laughs> we both had two older ones the same way. Then we had, you know, you remember you, my third. You guys decided to go one. Yeah, and so. that was you remember the situation with that. That yes. was uh, that was a life changer, showing you don't have control of a whole lot of anything. No, you know, you don't. Have, but. Um, but tell us a little bit about some of you. I know you do so much giving back to the community, um, but some of the things you get your hands in and, you know, some of the special people that you get to work with. I, I don't know them and I can't give enough credence, but I know you can share a little more. Yeah, you know, just really over the last five, six years, I've gotten very involved with uh, Special Olympics mm. and working with adults with disabilities. And again, something else that has changed your life. I started out really just um, helping through my company and mm -hmm. donating some money and uh, a woman told me to come, why don't you come and look at our, look at our group that was called Friends Helping Friends, which is actually okay. out in Elberton, Georgia. Okay. So after going to that, um, learning and, and watching, I said, you know, maybe I need to try. And I got an email one day right after I had finished coaching uh, Davis in baseball. Mm -hmm. I said, we'd like someone to come out and help with uh, Special Olympic softball. Okay. So you go out there to, to help and then you realize a few practices in, funny things happening. You're not helping them. They're helping you. Oh, wow. And uh, from that, uh, we've been doing it for the last five years, with exception of the interruption from COVID. Sure. Um, I'm now uh, very involved with a group called the Gwinnett Special Forces, mm -hmm. which is one of the many, many Special Olympic teams and organizations out there, uh, but has led to also serving um, on the honorary board of the Georgia Special Olympics. Oh, wow. As well as chairing uh, a group that's based in, um, based in Snellville at Grace Church. Uh, called the Exceptional Foundation of Atlanta okay. that provides um, good, uh, unique experiences to, to I say children, but to young adults sure. who have aged out of the school system, which is around 22 years old, okay. and uh, are looking for that next step. This helps to keep their minds fresh and help them to continue to uh, be able to become contributors. It's a wonderful organization. We've just, uh, like I said, at Grace, we're about to open up our second um, area at uh, the First United Methodist Church of Lawrenceville. Wow. And uh, have been partnering with churches in addition to the Church on Main in Snellville helps us with our summer program. We have a waiting list for uh, for participants. And uh, it really is. It's very fulfilling. But like I said, you you're, you you might be helping them, but they are really helping you to see, see the other side. So, you know, we've had uh, different guests on all different ages from, you know, new in the workforce to what they call retired, but I wouldn't consider some of the people retired and, and everybody in between. But at our age, uh, how, how important is that for uh, you to give back? I mean, uh, of really, I mean, is it, is it legacy? Is it making a difference in the world? Or is it you know, how you want to be remembered? I mean, what, what is it you think that is important to you? It's probably a, a combination of both. I think it really comes from your 
upbringing. You know, mm -hmm. you think about what your parents did for people when, when you were growing up. And I, you think about what other people did for you to help give, get you ahead. Right. And uh, in addition to that, I, I really enjoy working with uh, students um, that are just graduating from college mm -hmm. that are looking for, uh, you know, what, what am I going to do? What's going to be my <laughs> next step? And I remember all the meetings I had, you know, people that took time with me, maybe for a lunch or just a phone call. Give me some advice. Or a letter, just to give yeah, me advice yeah. or give me ways to think about, you know, think about this. And um, again, very fulfilling. I've had the opportunity to speak at classes at the University of Georgia and still stay in touch with some of those students just from one, one class that? talking to them. So it's been, it is, it's good. It's nice to see people succeed and you want to see people succeed. And that's, I think that's one of the main reasons I do it. Yeah, I was telling someone the other day, I can't remember who it was, it was some part of my life. And I said, you know, I don't know if you call it pay it forward or whatever you want to call it, but you know, if people did that for me or you back then, we're now planting those seeds into that next generation. That's right. Because there's things they need that they don't know how to do and say, let's see if we can help you. So I, I agree, I concur with what you said. I, I get great satisfaction in that. Yeah. Planting those seeds. So um, now in terms of um, how, how would you say, you know, this has been a tough, tough last 30 months. And, you know, you or I or Joe Blow might say, yeah, it didn't impact me as much. But, you know, physical fitness, spiritual fitness, mental fitness. I mean, I know a lot of people are still struggling, uh, especially if you've gotten older and you've been inside a lot over the last couple of years. H how would you define this time period or how much you give some encouragement to somebody? Well, you know, it's definitely been life changing. I think none of us look at the world the same way, nor will we ever. You know, there's those points in our lives that have all changed the way we you know, the way we think 9-11 being an example. COVID certainly has, has been that for uh, a great example for us is that we have moved. Oh, we really? decided to move. We now live um, oh, in right. Statham, Georgia, still still staying involved in Gwinnett. My, sure. wife, my wife is still a teacher at Craig Elementary, uh, where she just started her 25th year. But we decided why wait? And yeah. to me, that was the biggest issue. Why wait? Now, selfishly, I always wanted to live on a golf yeah. course. So out we went and we live on a golf course. But, um, but it's also changed the way we work, you know, through the, the really the, the advent of Zoom and uh, Teams. Um, you don't, you've realized you don't need to have face-to-face -face meetings, but, but at the same time, that personal touch for you and I both know is, is very important. So, so I was going to jump on this. So are y'all still utilizing when you can technology? I know it can't replace face-to-face. -face. I mean, certainly we're going to talk about that in a second, but do you use more tools than you would have two or three years ago? Absolutely. And, 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 and I've expanded my horizons because things that I didn't know how to do. <laughs> but I'm, you had I'm to learn. To do, but you did, you, by necessity. I mean, for, for that, that, I mean, if you didn't know it, which some of those tools I had not used a ton, but you had to figure it out, right? Right. right. But but coming back to what we, we said some past shows, and I know you and I feel uh, we're, we're doing our, our launch here, and then we're, we're going to make sure we make that happen. But what's the, there's some magic about the face-to-face the, the -face and the personal touch. Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I know that's almost really a God thing because we were made to be relational creatures, mm -hmm. but you can't make that the same, in my view, uh, uh, through Zoom. That's right. No, you, and even the work that I do, um, in which is government affairs, where you have to be with people. I mean, mm -hmm. the person we just met in the lobby, <laughs> no. I mean, that, that's, it's the, the you, you can't, there are certain things that can't be replaced. And what I would encourage everyone is while it is, while, while it is good to be able to, to, it makes it easy and maybe you can do a little bit more with meetings. I've had three Zoom meetings this morning already. Nothing uh, can compare to that personal interaction, that face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it was funny. We walked out b b between shows and, and, and saw people, and this has been the story of you, you and I's friendship. We always seem to run into two or three people and, and we all know person to person and we were talking right. about it before air, but. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, you you cannot uh, replicate that through a screen. I mean, it's it's helpful. Mm -hmm. It's good. It saves travel time. But I still think that uh, you know, face to face is important. Now, are you traveling with some of your clients for your business as much as you once had to, or is it you know a little less now? With Zoom? it's actually, of course, it was almost non-existent there for a while, but it's really picked up. It's nice to be out in conferences again. Yeah, it's nice right. to see people. Um, it's nice to make those those acquaintances. You never know down the road how that's going to, to help you. So I've been traveling actually a good bit. Have you? How important to people watching the show, Craig, you know, you've been in business, we've both been in business and in community stuff for life is, is relationships and connections and, and, and solid connections. I mean, how important is that to uh, making things happen or, or doing things the right way? I think really relationships are so important because and it's really not necessarily so important when things are going well. Yeah. It's when things aren't going well. Being able to call someone when something has maybe gone sideways, having that relationship that 
automatic icebreaker mm -hmm. really helps. And then especially in the work that I do, like I said, in government affairs, you've got to have those relationships. It's a relationship business. So we are, um, I, I think, again, you can't replace that. And being able to be in front of people, I would encourage everyone, don't, it's, it's too easy, it's too comfortable, sit in front of that screen, in shorts and a, and a golf shirt. <laughs> With and, your PJs. And, and PJs and feel like you've gotten something done. What you really need to do is is get out there and make sure you're seeing people. You know, I never want to dovetail, you know, our kids and whatever, because we've all raised them in different ways. But, uh, but, but, but we've got a generation, you know, that older than our kids that, that would prefer not to talk to, at times, talk right. to people on the phone. With you coaching some of these people, do you and share with them the importance of, calling or seeing people in person? Absolutely. I mean, what we talk about is, I mean, a couple of things you've got to do, I really think, internships, regardless of what business you're in. Mm -hmm. And I hate that so many internships of the last year and a half have been virtual. R remote, yeah. Right. And I was fortunate my daughter was able to do one in person in Savannah. She lived in Savannah for a whole summer. Okay. And I really changed the way she looked at business. Is that right? And she would not have gotten that same, my opinion, would not have had that same experience had it been from her living room. No, and, and, and I think I told you I'm teaching a course right now, and I taught a lot on ground because I love that. Online is just not the same. No. Um, I can't I can't make it happen no matter how many videos I leave or what I put it in there. It's just a little different. Right. You know, hybrid hybrid's good. You know, but uh, so so anyway, well, let's let's talk a little bit. Um, What's well, something fun? Anything fun you're looking forward to in the rest of 2022? But you know, get your dogs coming back, trying to, to football. Repeat. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you're, you're you know, how far are you from there now? You're, 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 we're, we're about about 12 miles from so the I'm stadium. I'm gonna guess you're gonna be at, uh, be enjoying this fall. We'll be at most of them. <laughs> but we'll do. We'll get to every one that we can get. But you know that again, what's been so great about that is um, the tailgating to see friends oh, yeah. and to see family and to, and to catch up because, you know, Facebook is great because you see people. It's like a highlight reel though, but you don't get to see well, the real in-depth. Exactly. I mean, I, I can tell you a lot where people live and I can tell you what they had for lunch, <laughs> but I really don't know what's really going on behind them. So it's, it's good to get out in front and, and see folks in situations like that. And really be able to, uh, talk and, and and go deeper yeah what, what do you see uh for yourself you know um for the future i mean in terms of what you want to spend more time in doing is it building upon these things you've been talking about or you know um uh, you know we're, we're 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 right in that middle of our our careers or whatever you want to call it but but um what do you want to do more of as, as the years go by and, and, and are looking forward to in the future? Yeah, I, think, I mean, I really think it's twofold. I mean, number one, there's things, travel. We ever think everyone likes to go and travel. And we've got some trips planned that one that was even canceled during right. COVID. So being able to get out and see the world was something that we haven't done. Uh, but then I think I've continued to want to, to try to give back and, and use the skills that I've learned through my career to be able to help others. And there really is something to be said in seeing people grow and being able to say, I had a, I had a part in that. Yeah. It, it's a, uh, it is a, it, it's such a key thing. The, um, I guess, you know, for the, there are people that are going to watch the show and they'll say, well, you know, you guys are so energetic and talking to whatever, but we're really just in a bad place. We're depressed. We're down. We're frustrated. And somebody usually told me, told me the term recently, I'm just exhausted after mm -hmm. I'm talking about a business center. That's right. What do you say to those people to give them a little bit of encouragement? Say so there's, there's, there's always see the good, always see the good of what's, of what's there. And it's really hard for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get I called, you. I get called a pessimist and that's mm -hmm. hard to do, but I really think that being able to, to see the good in people and to keep pushing forward is, is good and to stay off, stay off the internet. Yeah, and maybe like you said, I think before we went there, once in a while put the phone down and right. it's hard for people like you and me, but, but it's hard to be present without it, right? Exactly. All right, well, folks, uh, thank Craig Camisa. Thanks for coming on, thank my you. friend. I appreciate it, it's been, been too long. Thanks for tuning in, folks, and we will see you again next time.